What's going on? Alex here, and today I'm answering questions from the YouTube comments. And these questions have to do with establishing a business entity outside of the state of California to do business in the state of California. Will that provide any sort of tax benefits, and can that serve as a way to avoid California income taxes? So let's take a look. And first one is from Cobra Commander and goes as follows Mr. Efros, love your videos. I do as well. Thank you so much. Have a question. I live and work in Los Angeles, but California is not business friendly. You could say that again. Can I open an LLC in Nevada to avoid paying all the fees and costs and taxes from California? What do you recommend? All right. This is a good question. And this is one that's often brought up because California is indeed not business friendly. Why? Because for LLCs, for example, you get the privilege if you're doing business in California of paying an $800 annual minimum tax just for the privilege of having an LLC in California. On top of that, if your gross receipts exceed $250,000 in a particular tax year, you're also going to be looking at paying the annual LLC fee, which begins at $900 on top of the $800 and can go up from there. So you may very well be paying the state thousands upon thousands of dollars just for the privilege of doing business in California. And with that, along with other penalties and taxes and bureaucracy, red tape that's applicable to doing business in the state, it's logical that business owners are going to try to circumvent or avoid some of these taxes if they can possibly do so. And unfortunately, California saw this coming. All right. And it all has to do with the term doing business. All right. And I'm going to explain what that means. Here, we take a look at this FTB Franchise Tax Board website having to do with limited liability companies. And specifically, you see a bunch of topics here, but we want to know more about doing business in California. So let's take a look. So in terms of doing business in California, California defines doing business as, quote, actively engaging in any transaction for the purpose of financial or pecuniary gain or profit. An LLC is, quote, doing business if any of the LLC's members, managers, or other agents performs activities in California on behalf of the LLC, regardless of where the LLC otherwise conducts business. In addition, an LLC is doing business in California if it is a non-registered foreign LLC that is a member of an LLC that does business in California, or it is a general partner in a general limited partnership that does business in California. So these rules can get quite a bit technical, and we don't have to get into all of the specifics right now, but just know that the phrase doing business can be wide-ranging in its application. Let's take a look at some handy-dandy examples, though, and you'll find out that this is a bit of a funny coincidence here. So Paul is a California resident and a member of a Nevada LLC. Do you think that they saw this coming? Quite possibly. The Nevada LLC owns property in Nevada. The LLC hires a Nevada management company to collect rents and provide maintenance. Paul has the right to hire and fire the management company. He occasionally has telephone discussions from California with the management company in Nevada regarding the property. He is ultimately responsible for the property and oversees the management company. Paul conducts business in California on behalf of the LLC and the LLC must file form 568 and pay all those applicable taxes and fees. You can see here that there is a limited amount of involvement that Paul has arguably that he's using the management company based in Nevada, right? Nevada management company. And all he's doing is having some phone conversations to discuss the management of the property and oversee the management company. Even with that level of involvement, he's conducting business in California on behalf of the LLC. In this situation, it doesn't work out in the favor of the taxpayer. Let's look at the second example. Rachel is a California resident and member of an Oregon LLC. The Oregon LLC has a retail store in Oregon. Rachel uses a California address for the LLC's tax filings and a California accountant to prepare the LLC's taxes. Rachel conducts business in California on behalf of the LLC. You can see that even when it doesn't seem like you're doing business in California, these elements of management and overseeing the operations of a business can, in fact, mean that you're from an income tax perspective, doing business in California. And, and California is very aggressive about this stuff. And you can see that they 
very much see it from their own perspective in terms of you're likely doing business in the state unless you could prove otherwise, unfortunately. That, that's really how it's structured if we keep it real here. Let's look at example number three. Sarah is a California resident and a member of a Texas LLC. Texas does not have an income tax. So similarly to Nevada, someone could say, hey, I'll form my LLC in Texas and I'll do business in California. I can avoid all those taxes. Let's see how this scenario plays out. The Texas LLC receives royalties from Texas oil wells. Sarah maintains a California business bank account and secures financing in California for the LLC's Texas investments. Sarah, believe it or not, conducts business in California on behalf of the LLC. The LLC must file Form 568. So you can see in all three of these scenarios, it just so happens that California wins. All right. So you can see this area, they don't play games. They want to make the case that everybody's doing business in California unless you could prove otherwise. Essentially, it comes down to that. Now, with that said, going back to the question, I would not attempt to do what's outlined here because California will get you. All right. And if they can prove that you were doing business out of the state, then you're going to be hit with the penalties and interest. And it's important to remember that you still have to register your LLC in California if you're doing business in the state, even if it's a foreign, meaning outside of the state of California, foreign entity. So if you have an entity registered in a different state, you still have to register that entity in California as a foreign LLC. Then you can conduct business in California. All right. A lot to keep track of. But at the end of the day, don't get the idea that you can form a business entity in a different state and circumvent California taxes. They've seen this coming. They know all about this game. And unfortunately, it does not work. On top of that, you may also have filing requirements in that other state, depending on whether or not you did business in that other state and so forth. So many times this creates a lot more complication from an administrative perspective. So the only reason why you would want to organize your entity in the different state and conduct business in California is the possible legal benefits. And those have to do with, let's say, Delaware is, is very much friendly towards corporations. So you may form an entity in the state of Delaware and then do business in California, but that has nothing to do with an income tax benefit. You're still going to be subject to all the California taxes, so on and so forth. But it may be that from a legal perspective, you're looking to take advantage of some of the protections available to you based on the state level and Delaware or any other state may provide those benefits. I'm not an attorney. This is not legal advice. I don't know. But from an income tax perspective, there's no benefit in registering your entity in another state doing business in California because for all intents and purposes, it's as if you registered your entity in California from day one anyway. All right. And I got another question here. Thank you for the question, Cobra Commander. I also love the username, I must say. Let's take a look at this next question. This is from Saws Master A. All right. And this person asks the following. What if you have actual out-of-state license plus a VPN on your CPU and do business that way. Finesse? Okay. I'm going to give you A for effort. Nice try. I like the creative thought process. But what you're describing here is that you are getting a business license outside of the state. You're getting a VPN, which is a virtual private network. And the purpose of a VPN generally is to hide the origin or source of internet traffic on your CPU. So basically, you're using a VPN to hide the fact that you're doing business in California, I'm assuming, and do business that way. Can you do that? And is that finessing it? No. <laughs> so here's the thing. The states are very aggressive about tax collection. They can't print money like the federal government can. And with that, this sort of setup may very well not work out in your favor. And I actually have an anecdote to prove that point. You may be familiar with an entity known as Silk Road. And Silk Road was a marketplace that was established in the deep web or the dark web, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, People could buy anything, drugs, weapons, this, that, and the other. And the whole idea was none of these activities were traceable because they were using Bitcoin. Everything was encrypted. They were using dark web, all this fancy, fancy technology to try to obscure sources of money, who the buyers are, who the sellers are, 
so on and so forth. And the fact that they were using Bitcoin meant that it was very difficult, if not impossible, to track a lot of these transactions. So you think, wow, what can the authorities possibly do about this? Because you have this network that is very difficult to track. You have all these users that are trading money for drugs and weapons and all of this stuff. And the idea was that it should be impossible to trace. Who are we looking at on this Wikipedia page? This is Ross Ulbricht, and he is the founder, as much as I understand it, of Silk Road, of that dark web site. And what's the big deal about him? He is looking at double life imprisonment plus 40 years without possibility of parole. So how did they find him? He's working in this encrypted dark web with Bitcoin transactions, very difficult to trace, very difficult to track. How is it possible that he's in jail now? Well, the story of Silk Road and how this person came to be caught is fascinating. And there was a documentary, I believe it's called Deep Web, right here, 2015 documentary, which if you haven't seen it, check this out. It talks about how they actually found the identity of this person and came to arrest him. And wouldn't you know that it was actually an IRS agent who identified the founder of the site being Ross Ulbricht. And this IRS agent, let's just take a look here, Gary Alford, was the one who led authorities to shut down Silk Road. Interesting how that works out, right? It's the tax people that somehow solve a lot of these issues, a lot of these problems. What that's saying, essentially, is if they caught Ross Ulbricht, they'll catch you as well. Very good chance, all right? So don't take any risks with VPNs, this, that, and the other, and try to circumvent the tax laws because they will find you, especially if the amounts are significant enough. For example, Ross here had about $28 million of net worth at the time of the seizure of the Silk Road. The bigger the amounts, the more the authorities are going to be inclined to dig around and find you. But at the same time, even for small amounts, fraud is fraud. And I would stay away from that idea completely. All right. As a side note, it is kind of fascinating how they actually came to arrest Ross Ulbricht because they needed to catch him with his laptop open, signed into Silk Road, the website, as the administrator. And they could not give him enough time to push a kill switch to lock his computer and log him out. Because if he has time to press one button, theoretically, these agents that were tracking him knew that that could kill their entire case. So what they did was they tracked him down to a library. And this is a spoiler alert. If you want to watch the documentary, you want to pause the video now, watch the documentary and come back. It's fascinating how this all came together. But I'm going to spoil basically how it all went down. He's sitting in a library typing. And these agents, I believe it was a man and a woman, start arguing very loudly in a different area of the library. So they tried to distract his attention. So all of a sudden, instead of typing on his computer, he looks away to see who's arguing what the commotion's all about. As soon as he looks away, the agents swoop in. They grab his laptop before he could touch it and grab him so that they had the laptop still logged in as the username that he had dread Pirate Roberts was his name on Silk Road. He was the administrator, the head honcho there, their big man, so to speak. It was kind of like nabbing Al Capone, really. But the crucial point was that laptop was still open and logged in, and that's how they managed. They set up this whole scenario to distract him, and that's how they found him. But anyway, the point is that technology is not necessarily your friend in terms of addressing income taxes because when this stuff goes bad, it goes very bad and it can potentially ruin the rest of your life. I mean, this guy, Ross, for all intents and purposes, could be some sort of genius. You know, he could have possibly applied himself to many great and wonderful things, but he's, as far as I understand it, never going to leave prison. Again, take that as you will, but my recommendation, don't play games with income taxes. Everyone has to pay taxes at the end of the day. Unfortunately, we don't like it, but many times it's easier to just bite the bullet, pay the tax and go on living your life instead of getting a situation where you've created a much bigger problem than the tax you would have paid to begin with, okay? With that said, thank you guys for your questions. I appreciate it. And if you guys have similar questions or questions about anything in terms of financial planning or income taxes, drop them in the comments below. And if it's compelling, 
I'll make a video just like this one to provide you guys with guidance and some good answers. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video, and definitely watch out for more videos because they will be coming. With that said, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.